Merry Christmas, everyone. Welcome to Lord TV. We're so glad that you could join us. Uh, it's Christmas Day, and it's one of the best days of the year uh, because this is the day that we celebrate the uh, birth of Jesus when God so loved the world that he gave us his only son. And uh, we're going to get in the word uh, today and talk about what Christmas really means. Um, and we're going to start with the book of John. So turn with me to the Gospel of John, and we're going to go to chapter 1. And, you know, I'm, I'm not the best when it comes to Christmas messages, but I know what Christmas means. And, you know, I, I'm an associate pastor at New Creation Church. My name is Harry, and I'm so uh, excited that this time of the year we can use this to invite our friends and our family and our co-workers to come and hear the story of Jesus's birth because it's during this time that we can evangelize openly without anyone looking at us weird we can talk about it at church we can talk uh, sorry not at church we can talk about it at work we can talk about it you know to our neighbors and no one's looking at us strangely because we know it's the time of the year and so I thank God uh, that here in North America, across the world, we can celebrate um, Christmas. So in John chapter 1, this is what the Bible says. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And then in verse 3 it says, All things were made by Him, Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, I just pray this, uh, this Christmas day that you'll open the eyes of our understanding, that as we get into your word, you will minister to us in a mighty way. And Lord, your word says, the Bible says, that in your light we see light. So whatever the situation is today, Whomever is watching, I pray that the light of this word would lighten their situation and their life, that they will see the answers to problems, that they will be encouraged when they are cast down, and that you'll speak and minister to them explicitly. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, in John, we understand something, that God's Son, Jesus Christ, is the word and was with God from the beginning. Jesus didn't just come into existence when Mary had birth. Jesus was always, he always existed. The beautiful thing about the Christmas season is that this is when God gave his son into the world. He always was, he always existed. But here, during this time of the year, we celebrate the fact that God gave the word to us. The Word came to us by God. It was packaged and wrapped up by God Himself. You know, this time of the year we give gifts to family and friends. We wrap it up in a nice bow and we give it to one another. But here is God's very gift to mankind, given to us by God Himself. God didn't send angels. He sent His Son. God didn't um, uh, send your next door neighbor. He sent his son. And the scripture says that, verse 3, all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. We celebrate a baby in a manger, but we understand that he was the creator of all things. That God who created all things came in the form of a baby. He who placed the stars in the sky, who caused the earth to stand in space. He is the one that was born in a manger, who cried, who, who was hungry, who, 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 who the, uh, years later the, 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 the wise men came and gave gifts to. It is that child that we celebrate because it was God's gift to us, He who always existed. Now, let's skip to verse 14 in John chapter 1, and it says, And the Word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Bible tells us that God became flesh, 
that God who made all things was made flesh. That means before Jesus, God was never made flesh. It was only when God sent his son did God become flesh. You know, it's a very interesting thing to comprehend because we think of God in all of his glory. We think of God in the clouds. We think of God in heaven, a place that's supernatural where things are not physical. And, 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 and as much as, um, you know, the popular idea, the world likes to paint a picture of God, this old man with a beard sitting on a throne. No, no, no. God is not flesh, but the word became flesh and dwelt among us. God gave us his son, his only begotten son. And this time of the year, we think on the fact that God sending his son, leaving heaven, leaving the supernatural realm, became a flesh and blood. The word flesh in the Bible is uh, the word carnites or carnal. Means, um, uh, it means flesh. We get that word uh, when we talk about uh, um, carnality, you know, meaning flesh or um, meat. And, 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 and this word is so interesting because God was placed on this planet in flesh form, in human being form, unlike anything ever imagined before about God. You know, in the garden, the Bible says that when God came upon Adam and Eve, it said that he walked through the garden but it didn't say that he had legs or feet. <laughs> it just said God moved through the garden. When, when the Israelites left uh, Egypt, God led them by a pillar of cloud by day and by a pillar of fire by night. But it didn't say that he had flesh. Always through the Old Testament, we see glimpses of God, the glory, the Shekinah glory of God filling the temple of Solomon. But but we never see God in the flesh. But here, this day, we celebrate when God came down as a flesh, a human man. You know, it's, it's, it's an awesome thing to think about because why? Why is this such an important thing? Why, why is it important to note that God was made flesh? Well, the Bible says that being made flesh, he was made like one of us. Why is that important to note? Well, we understand in the Bible that God had to be made a man. Being made a man, he was able to identify with us. You see, when you have a rough day and you get home, you might experience a headache. You might experience tiredness and fatigue. God can't relate to that in heaven. He can't relate to that because he's spiritual. But he can relate to it because he was made flesh. If you turn with me in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4, it says, Seeing that we have a great high priest that is passed into, heaven, into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. The profession that we have is that Jesus was made flesh. And this is such an important instrument in the gospel, a certain, a, 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 such an important part of the gospel. Because when we go out to the world and we share the good news of Jesus Christ, we understand that our colleagues, our friends, they go through things and challenges in life. And we sometimes want to talk about the deity of God and how God is powerful and how God is great and how he can change your life in the snap of a finger if you would only believe. But the Bible says to hold fast to our profession. And what is our profession? Our profession is to declare that God sent Jesus Christ to come down to be made like one of us, to be made a man, to be made in our image and in our likeness. And I, 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 we always talk about the fact that, we, you know, for, for those of us that are Christians, we always talk about the fact that we've been made in his likeness and in his image. Amen. And he was, but we were, we are <laughs> in his likeness and in his image. But what I, what I always find so amazing is that God sent his son to be made like unto us. 
to, 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 to have flesh, to be tired, to, to, to have to go to sleep and wake up. You know, we, we, we sometimes don't like to think of Jesus after the flesh, but it's interesting that, you know, Jesus was a man. It was, you know, he, he got hungry. He, 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 um, the, when the rain fell, he got wet. <laughs> Glory to God. Jesus was made like us. God, he, he suffered his son to be made like us. And friends, this is so important because on a day like today, when we reflect on, on, on the season, the Christmas season, we, meet, we must be reminded that God's ideal situation wasn't to be made like us, but he was. God's plan was to make Jesus like us so that we could identify with him and he could identify with us. Now, I know that, you know, you're expecting to hear about a little baby in a manger and and I would love to tell you more about that. But I want to take opportunity this Christmas day to tell you something greater, that God loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you, that if you believe on him, you won't perish, but have everlasting life. And we find that scripture in John 3, 16. So we can go back to John. I want to share something with you about the beauty of today. In John 3, 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through the but but that the world through him might be saved. Stop there, friends. God's intention was not to condemn you in your sins when he sent Jesus. His intention was that Jesus would save you from the condemnation that is coming to you. God's plan was not for you to be condemned, to feel unworthy, to feel, oh, I'm going to hell, I have no hope. His desire was that you would be redeemed by His love through Jesus Christ. I liken it like this. When Noah was in the ark, there was a flood coming. And Noah told everybody, hey, there's a flood coming, you got to get prepared. But God only spoke to Noah. Noah was responsible to speak to the other people. No one believed him. They mocked him. They laughed at him. And that day when Noah, his family, and all the animals came into the ark, they shut the door and the waters began to pour. Now, what is the important thing to take away from that story is everyone was drowning except the people on the boat. If people got on the boat, they would not have died. And that's the whole reality of our world today. Everyone is going to die. And not just a physical death, friends, but there is a second judgment, a spiritual death, where you will forever be separated from God. And yes, suffer in all of eternity. But God has sent a boat, (laughs) and that boat is Jesus Christ. He sent an ark. (laughs) That ark is Jesus Christ. Get on the ark of Jesus Christ, my friends. Be saved from the destruction that's coming, because God didn't send Jesus in the world to condemn you, but to save you. Now you ask these questions, how can a God that loves me send me to hell? (laughs) It's the contrary. God is not sending anyone to hell. God's desire was never to send anybody into hell. Hell was created for the devil and the fallen angels and demons that followed him. The the devil has a special place made for him. It's the lake of fire. And God will send him there with all the angels that rebelled against God. That's what that place is for. But you see... Man messed up, man sinned, and in essence became one with the devil because they followed the devil instead of following God. But God is great. He sent Jesus, made like us, to save us from our sin so that you wouldn't suffer with the devil, 
but that you might have salvation through Jesus Christ, his son. You know, in the garden, there was two trees, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life. And among those trees were other trees, of course. And it's very interesting to note that man did not choose to eat the tree of life. They chose to eat the tree that God told them not to eat. They were deceived by the devil. You see, your problem is not God. Your problem is the devil. He's the one that tricked Adam and Eve. He's the one that's trying to keep your eyes blinded from this gospel message. But today, on this Christmas day, I believe that God sent you to see this broadcast, to hear the good news about how God loves you. And he doesn't want you to perish, but he wants you to live with him forevermore. He doesn't want you to suffer in this life with disease, uh, uh, all ailments of sickness, with poverty, uh, with being lost and, and having no hope, with depression, with all the things that crowd us because this world has fallen. God sent Jesus Christ that you might have full life, that you might be saved. You know, the word life in John chapter 3 verse 16 where it says, you might have everlasting life is a very interesting term. Everlasting life is not just speaking about a duration of life. When we think about everlasting life, we think about it in terms of, I'm going to live forever. Well, that's great. You know, you will live forever. And you will live forever if you don't accept Jesus either. Because the truth of the matter is, living a long duration of life, as in forever, just means that you're going to live a long duration of life, whether it's in heaven with God or whether it's in hell with the devil. When God spoke these words about how you believe not perish but have everlasting life, he was speaking also about the quality of life. The quality of life is God's quality of life, his life in you. Let me give you an example. The devil rebelled from God. He will live forever, but he will live forever in the lake of fire. Angels were created by God. They will live forever, but they won't live like you and I. The Bible says that God sent his son that we would have his quality of life, his very life living in us. Friends, what God has made available to us is even better than what the angels have. It's even better than what the angels have. And when did he make this life available? Well, it started when he sent his son to be born in a manger. Now, hearing this, what do you do next? You've heard that God loves you so much. You've heard that he sent Jesus in the flesh. Well, there's something more to just believe than God being sent as a baby. The most important thing is in this scripture. Turn with me to Romans chapter 9, uh, chapter 10 rather, verse 9. And if you don't have a Bible, hopefully you have a Bible app, and if you don't have a Bible app, well, you can go online um, and you can pi pull up a Bible uh, a URL, try Bible.com, Bible.org, whatever. Go to Romans chapter 10, verse 9. You can even Google it. And this is what it says. That if you confess, or sorry, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and will believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Harry, what are you doing? We're talking about Jesus being born. We're talking about Christmas. Well, Christmas was important. Christmas is important. But the real crux of the matter is that Jesus was sent to die. He was born to die. He was born to die for you and for me. You see, the whole purpose of God becoming flesh was so that the punishment of sin that belongs to mankind could be placed on Jesus, who was a man. God punished Jesus. In the book of Isaiah, it says it pleased God to crush Jesus. Why, why did God do this? It's, it's sort of sick. It's twisted if you think about it. But the reason was because we were not capable of saving ourselves. And we're not. 
You, no matter what you do in life, you get a good job, you get a happy wife, happy kids, you, you know, you, you, you have all the money in the world. Maybe you even have, uh, you know, some contentment in your heart. But there's always going to remain something missing. Something so key missing on the inside of you. You know, some preachers would say it's the little piece of the puzzle that's missing in your life. No, my friends, it's the whole puzzle. It's missing. And that's Jesus Christ. When God sent Jesus as a baby, several years later, He sent that baby who had become a man to die on the cross for your sins. And so that you would not have to die, He caused Jesus to die. And when He died, the Bible says that Jesus was sent to where all sinners are sent. He was sent into hell. And in hell, God raised him from the dead. Three days later after Jesus died, not only did he rise again, but he was seen by many of his disciples and many eyewitnesses. And then several days later, he rose back into heaven. And this is such a key part of the Christmas message because not only did it show that God loved us, but that his love was made complete at the cross when Jesus did the very thing he was sent to do, to die for you and me. And as Romans chapter 10 verse 9 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Friends, if you believe that God sent his son to be a man, to die for you, but not only to die, but rose him from the dead, you will be saved. Call upon the name of the Lord, my friends, and He will save you in your deepest, darkest hour. And oh, my friends, that's what Christmas is about. Christmas is, is about gift giving, but the greatest gift is the gift that God gave us through His Son, Jesus Christ. You know, as I, as I wrap up my message, I'm reminded of a story of love and uh, you know, it has to do with this uh, big preacher. Uh, uh, you know, he's a, he wouldn't call himself a preacher, but uh, I don't want to get into <laughs> describing his names. But basically, he was a missionary type, or he was doing mission type of work. And uh, he, he went to a, a hotel. And uh, when his plane landed in the city, he went to a hotel. And the time was off. You know, this was out very far out of, uh, out of uh, North America. And doing his mission work, he was there to speak at a conference, but uh, he couldn't sleep because the time, time zones were different. So he got up, he went downstairs to see if he could get some food. Of course, the restaurants are closed in the middle of the night at hotels. So he walked across the street into a bar. And uh, inside of the bar, uh, were a couple of people in the corners and people playing pool. You know, it's the middle of the night. They should be home uh, sleeping, but <laughs> that's not what they do at bars, apparently. And he went up to the bar uh, where, the, where the barkeeper was, and he was like, hey, can I order some food and maybe, uh, you know, something to drink? And he's like, absolutely. What do you want? And, and so he orders it, and as he's sitting down and he's waiting for his order, uh, a, a few young ladies come in uh, who are, um, uh, you know, uh, I would say they live the nightlife. Uh, this is a family program, so you can fill in the blanks. But these girls that came and lived the, the nightlife, and they were coming in, and they were laughing, and they were loud, and they were talking and, and making their jokes. And the preacher overheard, and he said, well, uh, the, one of the girls said, uh, can you guys believe tomorrow is my birthday? And the other girls laughed and said, Oh, what do you want us to bake you a cake? And the girl whose birthday it was the next day, she said, Oh, no, don't worry about it. No one has ever baked me a cake because no one cares about me. And they continued chatting and laughing and doing whatever, but that stuck with the preacher. He was so impacted by those words that that girl said. And... Um, his food came and he asked the barkeep and he said, you know, quietly, you know, he said, hey, by the way, those girls over there, do they come in every night? And uh, the barkeep, you know, motioned to them, oh yeah, that's such and such and such and such. And they're here every night uh, before they go back out. They usually come and have a drink or whatever they do. 
So the barkeep uh, waited until they, uh, sorry, the, the preacher ate his food, waited until they left, and then he approached the, 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 uh, uh, the bartender and said, hey, can we throw a birthday party for one of those girls? called her by name and, and said, I'd like us to, to have a birthday cake for her and maybe some streamers and, and put some candles on the cake. And, you know, if we can do that, that would be awesome. And the, and the bartender said, yeah, for sure. That sounds like a great idea. She would really love that. So that next day, they went ahead, they made some plans, they got everything together and the minister did what his part was. And so the it's that same time of the night, the next day, they all got together and the streamers were up and the cake was there and the girls all came through the door as, as normal and they yelled surprise, happy birthday. And the girl was shocked. They were laughing, they were excited and uh, felt so great they sat her down and brought the cake in front of her with the candles. And they sang happy birthday and she blew out the candles. But she was quiet, she was still. And and they asked, you know, what, what's wrong? And she said, I, I, no one has ever loved me. No one has ever done anything like this for me. And, and some of the girls were moved with emotion and they felt sad and, and, the, and, the, and, and they said, well, you know, what was your wish? And she said, my wish is that I don't have to cut this cake. I, I just want to take it home and remember that, that you all love me so much. And they said, well, don't, don't, you know, don't think about us, think about him. And they pointed to the preacher and the preacher said, hey, you know what, Jesus loves you and, and, and remember that. And, and, and the night continued. And uh, it, 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 you know, that story really moves me, but the part that really moved me was the barkeeper said to the pastor, he said, what kind of church do you pastor at? And the, and the pre preacher said, he said, the kind of church I'm a part of is the ones that throw birthday parties at 2 a.m. in the night for prostitutes. And that was such a powerful reminder that God is not here to condemn you of your sin. That story reminded me that, wow, God isn't in the business of condemning sinners. No. In fact, he's in the business of loving them. And the greatest love that he's ever shown a sinner is when he sent his son to die. Friends, in my last moments here, I want to take an opportunity and invite you. You don't have to get up. You, you don't have to, um, you know, go on your knees or anything. But what you have to do is what Romans said. You have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus died and rose again. And not just because he did that, but because he did that for you. And friends, the Bible says that if you do confess with your mouth, and if you do believe, you will be born again. You will be saved from your sin. And more importantly, you will have eternal life. Just bow your head with me and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sin. And I confess him that he was raised from the dead and that he purchased my salvation. I ask you to forgive me of my sin, to make me brand new. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Hey, look. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. If you meant it in your heart and you confessed with your mouth, you are saved, my friend. And I've got good news for you. That's all you need to do. That's all you ever need to do. Now, from this point forward, you just need to trust God and be led by the Spirit of God in you. Please write us here at Lord TV. We would love to be able to connect you with a church that can help you to grow in your experience with God but I want to congratulate you. And for the rest of you who already know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and to our new friends, um, Merry Christmas to all of you. And uh, please take this opportunity to share this great message with somebody else today. God bless you.